Okay, I'm gonna get started here in about 15 seconds, so if everybody can find their seat. We have four presentations today, so I only get a small sliver of the hour, and I wanna make sure I get to share as much with you as I can. So I'm Tim Newdecker, been a FileMaker developer, paid FileMaker developer for over 28 years. Um, I've got every certification FileMaker's ever offered, including the old proficiency exams in the five and six world. Um, won an excellence award once, long ago. I'm also an audiophile. I, I like big, heavy amplifiers. I have to make multiple teenage sons carry to move around the house and very bright British speakers. Uh, probably because I was a teenager when Walkmans were invented and I have a severe high-end hearing loss. <laughs> um, I also like uh, stealth performance cars, things that look like grocery getters that amaze people when they see what they can do. So. We're gonna talk about today our get functions. I assume everybody's used a get function at least once in their code. Everybody knows kind of what they are. So you have a basic idea of what they do, but it seems with every version of FileMaker Pro, they add more get functions. And if you don't know they exist, you don't think to go use them and go out there. So I wanna show you some of the common ones people do use as well as a bunch of the weird ones you may never have heard of. You don't have to remember all the details. I still can't remember for get current screen mode if one is browse mode or preview mode or two is that. I'm still opening the help file every time. I just can't remember. But if you don't know that function exists, you'll never use it. So just knowing they exist is all you have to know. You don't have to know the exact results they give you. Just know you have the power so in the back of your mind you can solve that problem when it comes up someday. Okay, so, this is gonna be all demos. I'm just gonna jump right out of this thing and we're gonna open up my sample file and this should be downloadable from the DevCon website. And let's put this back to the front page. So first I'm gonna talk a little bit about the demo file because I actually built a demo file using get functions. So I have a refresh button and a next button for navigation between layouts. If I hit next, it takes me to the next layout, the next layout, the next layout, the next layout, and the last one, notice the next button disappeared, okay? And when I hit previous, it appears and goes back. This is the exact same button cut and paste on every layout with the exact same script. There actually are no scripts or single script steps on each button, okay? And let's just take a look at what I'm doing here. So you'll see here's the button bar, and I'm gonna open up the previous button and you'll see it's a single script step, go to layout by number. And I'm gonna zoom in, no fear, no fear. So I simply say go to layout, get the current layout I'm on, minus one. Okay, so it's just looping through, it's just like go to next record. I built a go to next layout button and a go to previous layout button. It's literally what it is. So by using a get function to get I'm on layout four, well, let's go back to layout three for the previous, okay? And the next button is identical to that. Let me close this up. Let's look at next. And it's the only difference is I put a plus sign in there instead of a minus sign, okay? So to go to the next layout. Real simple, but it's a great way to use a get function. Make your system smart, so if I make a new layout with new samples, I just put it in the order I want and I don't have to reprogram any buttons and the system just keeps working the same way. So let's close this. So there's one other bit of magic going on here. Some voodoo with these hide show calculations. So notice I have a hide function on individual buttons in a button bar. You can hide individual buttons, make them appear or disappear in a button bar. And so let's pick this button Let's go to our data tab and let's look at what we're doing for the hide. And this calculation simply says if the layout number I'm on is the count of layouts I have in my file, hide me. So if I have four layouts in my file and I'm on layout four, I can't go to the next layout because there isn't one. So that simple. Two get statements, if they're equal, I know I'm on the last one. Okay, very similar to the record, get current record number, get found set count, if they're the same, I know I'm on the last record, using the same technique with layouts. 
but FileMaker doesn't give us a go-to next layout and previous, so we had to build that. So I simply hide the next button when we're on the last layout. And of course, previous is the same thing. Um, let's just take a look, but instead of saying get count them, I say, hey, if I'm on the first layout, don't go to a previous if layout equals one. Okay, real simple, nothing fancy, but it lets you see the power of these get functions. So let's go back and do the real stuff. So what I've done is I've laid out a bunch of get functions by some categories onto a layout. Oh, let me show one more bit of magic. I have no fields in this database other than the default fields. Okay, I made one simple text field to put some data in, just to keep things simple. I didn't go and make a calc field for every get function. Instead, in one of the earlier versions of FileMaker, I think it was 15 maybe, somewhere around there, we got the ability to insert get functions on layouts. If you simply wrap the parameter for the get function, in this case, a count group name, inside the curly brackets, the calculation engine will evaluate it and replace that text, kind of like putting a page number symbol or a time symbol on the layout. So you can put any get function on a layout and it just tells you what it is. So that's how we did this. I'm not going to save any changes. So I'm not logged in with a group right now, but this, if we're using external authentication, will tell me what group I'm logged in with. So if you're using OAuth, Active Directory, Open Directory, and managing all your user accounts with external accounts, you can find out what group somebody's logged in with. We can find out the account name. In this case, I'm logged in with admin. We can get privilege set names. We can also get a current privilege set name. Now, why are there two privilege set names? Well, there's actually a way you can run scripts as an access full. So when you select a script, you can go down and say, hey, run with admin privileges. So it actually turns somebody into full access while that script is running. So you can tell, hey, what am I right now versus what am I logged in as? Since you can kind of change your privileges as you're going. So you got to make sure you pick the right ones if you're going to use these in your security scripting. Account type, I'm authenticated via FileMaker Pro, not an external server. Um, I can get what extended privileges I have. And again, like the privilege set name, the extended privileges can change depending on which privilege set you're currently operating on. So we actually have two of those. We have the one for the account, and we have the one for at the current moment, this is what you are granted to do. Then we have this record access. It gives how many record access, layout access, and I think there's one more for field access. They tell if you're allowed to edit that field, if it's open, closed, or locked. It used to be to check if a record was locked, you'd try to set a field and see if you got an error and you trap for it. Well, now you can just pull a get function and you don't have to send a lock command out over the network, wait for it to update all your users, then come back and tell you, yep, that record was locked or not locked. Okay, so this is much faster if you want to see if a record is locked. It, and it also, I'm sorry, I'm lying. That's a different get function going down the road. This one tells if my privilege set allows me to see this record or edit this record or it's locked for me to see via the privilege set. I got it out of order. That's a different function to check on the record lock state. And the same goes for a layout. Can I edit this layout? Can I view this layout or is it locked? So one I believe is edit, two is, or one is view, two is edit, and three is no access. User count, how many people are logged into this file? Since I'm a single user on my machine, that's only a one. When you put it on the server, you can actually say, hey, there's five people logged into the dashboard right now and see what's going on. And of course, the good old fashioned username, there's also an account name. The username is controlled via edit file preferences. Where's my FileMaker preferences? Right here, boom, and then you can put in whatever username you want down below. Okay, so let's go on to the next one. And we have active field content. So if I click into a field and I hit refresh, it tells me the contents of the field I'm in. So you can use this for some generic scripting where the user can pick any field in a grid and you want to get the contents of that field. 
So you say active field contents, whoop, you grab that content back into your clipboard or into your script, put into a variable. Active field name, so there's what field I'm in. Let me, let me click in a different field and hit my refresh button. Hey, that field has green in it and it's called field two. And it's coming from table portal. And the active layout object, I put an object name on it called portal field two, and that shows up. We see the active portal row number, the active record number, see we're on record one, Active selection size, watch this. I can select the two E's in there, hit refresh, and it says I've selected two characters. And it tells me that I started my selection at three. So you can actually tell if the user has a highlighted word, and then you could copy or paste that word or select that word, do math on it, then go back in, do your left, right, middles, and substitute out what they had selected. So you can do all kinds of really cool text manipulation with these things. Okay, so let's go to the next before I run out of time, get booted off the stage. Uh, old fashioned ones, everybody knows these, current date, current time, current timestamp, milliseconds if you're trying to time things down real tight. The FileMaker path, this tells you where FileMaker Pro is installed on the hard drive. So if you wanna manually install a plugin or save something out to the same folder as FileMaker, you can do that. The file name that you have open, a bunch of the design functions as a parameter, you have to tell them the file name, like the get value list from a file or get the list of tables. And you can use this to tell the name of the current file because you may change your file name over time. You know, backup one, backup two, clone. File size in bytes of the current file. So as you're adding containers and stuff, it'll tell you how big your file is. Document pathway, the temporary pathway and the preference file. Let's mosey on here. Now we can do lots of window magic. So if I hit refresh, I can see that my window zoom level is at 150. I made everything kind of big for everybody to see. And my window is visible, it's not hidden. I can also see the orientation. So on an iPad, iOS device, you can tell if they're a portrait or landscape. In window mode, hey, zero is browse. What do you know? I never remember that. Window left, so if I move my window around and I hit the refresh button, I can see these things change. Let's put it over here, hit refresh. So you can find out the window position. You can also find out the content in the window where it is versus the toolbars and the menus. And that makes it all rock. Let's get nice and big again. Let's go to the last one. We have the desktop path again. What kind of device we're running on? Are we running on an iPhone? Are we running on a Mac, a Windows machine? Everybody uses those. The host application version. Hey, I wanna make sure my IT's keeping my server up to date. Do we have 18.02 on there? Well, I can find out right from here. That's great for vertical applications to make sure your clients are hosting on the version of server you want them to host on. The IP of their host. Last error, that's all over the place. Everybody uses that. You can find out what printer the user has selected. So you could change the printer if it's not the label printer before you print labels. Um, user account, we talked about that. System version, this tells the, op the OS operating system version number application version, and then one of my favorites is modifier keys. I'm gonna hold the shift key, and I'm gonna hit refresh. Shift is a one, I'll hold the control key. Control is a four. If I hold them both, I get a five, the sum of the two numbers for the keys. So each key is a power of two, and then you add them all together to get the number it returns, and all you have to use is the mod function to find out what's going on. And that's it, the file should be downloadable so you can play with it. We actually got through them all. Thank you very much.